Hello, welcome to today's video, Advantages of Testing Early for the Coronavirus. Here's what you would like to understand about COVID-19 tests. The United States government is fighting to contain and hamper the spread of the coronavirus. Testing is central to those efforts. Molecular biologist and viral researcher Maureen Ferran answers some basic questions on how these diagnostic tests work, and if there are enough to travel around. Who gets tested for the virus? Currently, there are two main reasons someone would be tested for the coronavirus, having symptoms or exposure to an infected person. The main symptoms of COVID-19, the disease caused by the coronavirus SARS-CoV-2, are fever, dry cough and shortness of breath. These look tons just like the flu and therefore the cold, so it takes a physician to work out if testing for the virus is important. Initially, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention recommended testing only people with symptoms and who had potentially been exposed to the virus. But to the surprise of public health officials, several of the primary people within the U.S. who tested positive for the virus had no obvious exposure. This development suggested that the virus was being transmitted locally, meaning it had been spreading from person to person easily and or that folks may are transmitting the virus without experiencing serious symptoms. In response, on March 4, the CDC changed its recommendations to permit anyone with COVID-19-like symptoms to be tested as long as a doctor approved the request. Since the amount of obtainable tests is restricted, the CDC is encouraging physicians to attenuate unnecessary testing and consider a patient's exposure risks before ordering tests. As of scripting this, there are not any specific treatments available for COVID-19, but that doesn't mean testing is pointless. Perhaps most significantly, testing is completed in order that infected patients are often quarantined and therefore the spread of the virus slowed. Another advantage of testing is that it lets public doctors build a more accurate picture of the number of cases and the way the virus is spreading within the population. What does it wish to get tested? For a patient, the method of being tested for the virus is straightforward and may potentially be done almost anywhere. It typically involves taking a swab from deep during a patient's cavity to gather cells from the rear of the nose. The sample is then sent to a lab, where it'll be tested to work out if the patient's cells are infected with the virus. An equivalent process is employed to gather a sample from a patient who is tested for flu. How does the test work? While collecting a sample is straightforward, actually determining whether an individual is infected with the coronavirus is far more complicated. The present method looks for the virus's genetic material RNA, during a patient's cells. In order to detect the presence of RNA within the patient sample, labs perform a test called reverse transcription polymerase chain reaction. This method first converts any viral RNA to DNA. Then the DNA is replicated many times until there are enough copies to detect employing a specialized piece of kit called a quantitative PCR instrument. If genetic material from the virus is found within the sample, then the patient is infected with the virus. It takes 24 to 72 hours to urge the results of a test. During the first ramp up of testing, there have been some concerns about the test's accuracy after one study found 3% of tests in China came back negative when the samples were actually positive. But this sort of genetic test is usually very accurate, more so even than rapid flu tests, and therefore the benefits of testing outweigh the danger of a mistake. Does the US have enough tests? The availability of tests has been an enormous issue. Before Leap Day, the CDC was the sole place approved by the FDA to develop, produce and process tests. However, because the number of suspected cases climbed and doctors approved more people for testing, demand to be tested soared. The test for the coronavirus requires a kit, specialized equipment, and specially trained personnel. Faulty and slow development of test kits and therefore the initial requirement that each one tests be processed at the CDC contributed to the slow rollout across the U.S. As pressure on the federal to form tests available increased, the FDA announced a replacement policy on Leap Day that made it easier for commercial and academic laboratories to develop their own tests and allowed other certified labs to check patient samples. Integrated DNA Technologies, a CDC contractor, shipped 700,000 tests to commercial, academic and healthcare laboratories on March 6. 
Quest Diagnostics and LabCorp, two large commercial test manufacturers, started making their own test kits, which became available on March 9. Many companies, hospitals, and other institutions are now racing to develop more tests to diagnose COVID-19. On March 10, Alex Azar, Secretary of Health and Human Services, announced that 2.1 million testing kits are now available and quite 1 million have shipped to certified labs for testing. Does everyone actually need to be tested? Realistically, it is not feasible to check everyone who is sick within the U.S. Therefore, most health officials believe it's important to prioritize the testing of individuals who need it the most, those at high risk like health care workers who are in touch with COVID-19 patients, symptomatic people in areas with high infection rates, and other people 65 years aged and older with chronic health issues, like a heart condition, lung disease or diabetes. As more tests become available, it'll be possible to check more people. There's also a requirement to develop faster tests that don't require special equipment and personnel. Testing allows experts to raise to understand how the outbreak is progressing and check out to predict the impact the virus will wear society. As with all outbreaks, this pandemic will end. In the meantime, however, people got to wash their hands and check out to attenuate their risk of exposure. There's much to be learned about this novel coronavirus. How does the foremost common coronavirus test work? For diagnosing SARS-CoV-2, a PCR test starts with a nasopharyngeal swab, which seems like an extended Q-tip that pulls mucus from the rear of a patient's cavity where it meets the throat. This swab goes during a vial and is shipped to an FDA-approved central lab facility. There, technicians use reagents to extract any viral RNA. An enzyme called polymerase converts the RNA to a complementary sequence of DNA, which may be replicated repeatedly over to form it easy to detect. To accomplish this replication and detection, technicians, or automated machines, in most cases, add additional reagents that include a pair of primers that contain copies of pieces of DNA matched to the virus ordering, a DNA copying enzyme called polymerase, fluorescent reporter probes sure to small DNA strands matched to sections of the viral genome near those targeted by the primers, and free nucleotides that the enzyme uses to repeat DNA. A PCR machine raises the temperature, causing the two strands of DNA helixes to separate into single strands. The temperature is then lowered, allowing primers and reporter strands to bind to corresponding sequences on the only strands. The temperature is then raised to an intermediate level, encouraging the polymerase enzyme to latch on where a primer sure to a strand of DNA. The enzyme moves along the strand, adding complementary nucleotides until the strand is copied. When the polymerase reaches the reporter sequence, a fluorescent probe is released, creating an optical signal that the strand was copied. The cycle then repeats, turning two target strands into four, then eight, and so on. After about 40 cycles there are roughly 100 billion copies of the target DNA and an easily detectable fluorescent signal. PCR has high sensitivity and selectivity, which suggests it correctly spots most the positive cases and properly rules out most the not infected cases, says Stephen Valinsky, a communicable disease physician at Northwestern University. That makes PCR a very good diagnostic assay. Please check the video for full information about 10 food to boost your immune system please don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more recommendations on health, relationship, lifestyle and other helpful information to form life easier.